What is good, guys? This is Charles and Team COG coming at you guys here with another post Dune dual commentary video with my with myself piloting Infernal Knights, featuring all the support, playing against Eureka, the the European national winning thing here. Uh, so we end up winning the dice roll, and uh, we're gonna go first showcase you guys some new combo lines and stuff like that. So right here, I'm gonna show you guys why like your normal summon Ogier, like this Ogier plus Renaud or Ogier, and anyway, Renaud is like a two card antenna bureau line, which is really good. Looking at my uh, plant link camp, my buddy's uh, Sun Avalon Rika over here. Uh, it looks like he just opens an imperm, which is pretty decent, but we're gonna special summon out Renaud, grab back the gear free, going for Lancelin. So Lancelin's really cool. It allows it allows this two card combo to be like doable, right? So like normally the only antenna bureau line we'd have would be OG plus museum, but by playing Lancelin, we get the ability to uh, play multiple anti Nibiru, anti hand trap lines. So we're gonna go ahead and use Durandal, add the Turpin. Use Gear Freed, special itself, use Ogier to equip to the Gear Freed, and then special out the Turpin from the hand, linking away into Isolde. Isolde's effect on summon is going to get an Imperm, which is would be traumatic, but it's not too bad because we open the field spell. This field spell is like a four of in the deck. I it, It's insane. This field spell is literally one of the most powerful cards we get in the new set that allows us to like play through like interruptions and stuff. So we're gonna use the field spell. Add Alamus, special summon out Ogier to still protect from hand traps to make a second as old since he impermed us on the add. Uh, considering, like, you know, he didn't wait for the effect to send, which I guess, you know, some people some people make that mistake. But we're going to go ahead and special out Ricardetto, Ricardetto, bring back the Ogier. And we're still off to the races. It's almost like we, he just hand looped himself, right? <laughs> so we get to go ahead and continue on moving forward into, I believe, Angelica. Oh, there. Yeah, I had to just pull out Angelica. Angelica going to go ahead and add me a second copy of the field spell. And then we, I believe we use Angelica. We use Banish 2 for the Gear Freed, or Banish 2, excuse me, for the Phoenix Blade. And then we end up equipping it to Angelica, Chain Angelica's effect. We send, I believe, Roland, main deck Roland, since we were able to add it off the Azul to get the end phase add to, to go ahead and summon out the main deck Roland. And then we're gonna go ahead and I believe we equipped the Turpin. Yep, go ahead and attach a Turpin. Then we go and activate the new field spell, pay 12. So we've paid 24 so far to go ahead and grab a Durandal for follow-up. And then we're using the new field spell to summon out the Turpin, allowing us to make Charles, which is, you know, myself in anime form. So like, if anyone has the right to play this deck, I feel like it's me personally, because you know, like I am, my name is Charles and my uh, dad was actually named after King Charles. And then I was named after my dad. So I don't have any, I don't have any cool any cool name, but I think I actually have a terraforming in hand too. Yep, there it is. So I actually get to use all three field spells, uh, which is just insane. In game one, it, in game one, it's like okay to do this kind of crazy balls of the wall type of stuff because every, the likelihood you're not going to lose in time, believe it or not. So we're going to go ahead and use the new field spell, uh, which I think we used Joyous here to use, or maybe I I might have missed it. Um, I don't know if I, I should have used it to search. If I didn't use it to search, I couldn't summon the Charles, but I think I did use it to search. If not, I just should have just used it to search, grab the other Durandal, and then we'd have double Charles here. But it's all right. We're going to equip Joyous, equip uh, Ogier. So we're looking at two Spell and Trap Negates, a Pop, a Monster Negate, and one Charles cannot be targeted by card effects. With the in phase roll and add, to go ahead and add Gear Freed for a follow-up. So let's see what Rika Sun Avalon here can do. I wonder, I think that, like I said, their hand was full of spells from what I could see, so I don't know what they drew. Oh, so they drew a monster, they drew Petal, wow. And a Call by the Grave too. Decent. That is actually pretty decent. That's actually, the Call by the Grave is pretty detrimental, I think here, because it's going to, the Call by the Grave is going to be able to hit the Roland. Uh, normally this deck doesn't lose to Roland, or like Call by the Grave, because we normally have the main deck Roland in hand, so like they Call by the extra deck one, we're okay. But we're seeing we're gonna start with unexpected die. I say go ahead and resolve the die. So he does the die, and right here I think I decide to fire off the. You no, know, he goes into the seed. He goes seed into uh, Dryas. I go ahead and negate with Gear Free to destroy. He's gonna go ahead and activate Thrust, and I can't. I debate on the Thrust, but I was like, whatever he activates with Thrust, I can just negate anyway, so it's all right. So like that was that was my thought process. There's really not anything he could truly grab. I mean, he technically could grab Dark Ruler, but that'd be kind of. It would be a little bit counterproductive, I feel like. But he's going to go ahead and, I believe, add Glamour, I think is what he goes for. He's thinking on the tactics there. So he goes for Glamour. Sweetness. I know that I just got to keep Con Con off the field. So yeah, there it is right there. He activates Con Con, and I go ahead and use Gear Freed's effect, or not Gear Freed, uh, Charles's effect to negate and destroy the Con Con. I just cannot have that touch, touch down. 
So he's gonna go normal summon the pedal, and on pedal, I'm gonna activate the Roland to equip. And then he's going to, I believe he's going to say, wait a second. So he's thinking on Call by the Grave, so he's gonna Call by the Grave. So I'm gonna use the second Charleston to negate the Call by the Grave to equip and destroy and pop his. So he's already normal, he's already plowed through all these cards. He has one card in hand, and he's gonna activate Rika Sheet. And I can't stop Rika Sheet, but there's not really much he could grab here, honestly. Uh, well, I guess, I mean, technically, there's not much he can grab. And he sees that, and we're gonna go ahead into a game two situation where the Lorax is gonna go first here. Let's see if we can burn down the forest, right? So game two, rolling up here. And when you already look in his hand, he has full combo right away um, with <laughs> the seed. The seed's gonna go in the Drius, activate sowing. So this is a little bit, this is like different than the way that I played Sun Violet or the Sun Avalon deck. I played a heavier Sun Avalon count, so like my inboards would be like more diverse and pretty much higher impact than just like ending on like two to three disruptions. I was aiming for five to six. And I mean, just different, different strokes for different folks, am I right? So with that being said, he's just doing the full combo here. Uh, the Rika, the Rika, come on. He opens the Lily. Lily equips that. Lily sends that. Go ahead and add Disc Coliseum. Then you guys know what it is. Add Disc Coliseum. Add Regulus. And then he has an Omni Negate, which is pretty crazy. That's why I believe Regulus, because this deck right here, believe it or not, loses really hard to, like, even leader Lightning Storm. Well, not so much Lightning Storm, but can lose to Lightning Storm. It loses to evenly more than anything, so it's very good to get an Omni Negate out like he did there just to be able to protect himself. Uh, because it's just it's crazy and he has an ash in hand too which is just good which is just good enough disruption he's going to use the twin to use its effect to get another search and then i believe he's going to go for yep snowdrop so this is actually he does like a very interesting line here and i think he was saying he kind of messed up so he has to make do with what he's got and it's very like i said it's interesting so he's contemplating kind of using the teardrop he uses the madon tribute the vine whatever that to grab the con con He's going to link into a three, where he's probably going to go into uh, Trius, Trius to bring back the seed, go into Bengalancer, the Resurgent. And then he's going to go and activate Con Con, use Con Con's effect to go ahead and set the Glamour. I think he had Snowdrop in his hand. I think he should have fired off the Snowdrop instead of, and he'd he have fired off the Con Con too. But he's going to use Bengalancer as a tribute to go ahead and link into Strena, Strena detach to go ahead and add the add back. I think he had a back Glamour. Yeah, I think I got it. He has two Ash in hand. That's pretty, pretty crazy, actually. Uh, so now he's thinking about, he wants to make the Strin alive. And he does a very interesting play here, uh, which I, hindsight's 20-20. Uh, he could have waited for me or he could do it himself. Uh, this is, he should have probably went ahead and if he would have used the Snowdrop at the beginning, he would have been able to get Snowdrop done out. But he's going to go ahead and Tribute Summon for the <laughs> Snowdrop, making the... Uh, Tree Deer is what I like to call it. And he goes past me. He does forget one thing. He forgets to add to resummon back Bengalancer. So he should have a bounce on his board too. But what, I, what we're staring at here is quite a lot. We're staring at three negations by itself. But he's going to Ash Rota. We activate the Field Spell. Um, so we're staring at an Omni Negate. We're staring at a Monster Negate and a mon like two Monster Gates and an Omni Negate. And if he would have remembered Bengalancer, we'd be staring at a bounce too, which that would be, that'd be enough. The bounce would honestly probably be enough. My hand's actually pretty good. Like, this is one thing about this deck is, like, everyone's like, well, this deck can't go second. I highly disagree. I think this deck's main engine allows it to go second, not because it's, like, the cards that go second, but simply because the cards do so much and they, they deserve responses. So it's easy to, like, really fire off a board and get it to be negated. Uh, but he's going to negate the uh, field spell. I'm going to go ahead and normal summon Turpin, equipped to Turpin the Joyous, and then I think I want to special summon Turpin from my hand. And then I'm trying to think of what the next line of play here is. I think, especially summon out Renaud. No, I'm not using any effects. I'm trying to, like, I, no matter what, I can't beat over the second negate and grave. So I'm just really struggling here to out this board. Um, if he had one less as disruption, I could out it. But him having the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the princess in the graveyard live makes this kind of rough. So I just hard make um, Charles here. And then I just end up going to battle phase, going Charles to tack over this. So I end up getting rid of the Princess Negate, but I still have to stare down the Hyperion over here. And the Hyperion negates and destroys. If I had the ability, like if I had opened like OG or something, could have clipped it to Charles, I'd be way better off. I potentially could have outed this board. However, it just it did the it was not written. Uh, he had just enough, and I didn't have just enough. Opening two turbans is kind of difficult. However, as you guys can see, uh, opening two turbans doesn't make it the end of the world as we're able to like still use them. Now, like, maybe, maybe, 
I'd have to read Kustinen. Maybe I would have made, there's a world where I make Kustinen and I end up using Kustinen's effect. And if he negates and destroys, Kustinen floats into the king. Maybe that would have been a good way to go. But we're just in here thinking, I'm just trying to, you know, at the end of the day, if he chooses not to negate Charles, like he's scared of something else, like maybe he will uh, let it go through and then it'll be too late. But regardless, even if I go here and I attempt to pop something, uh, he can let it resolve. If, well, I'm gonna go after Hyperion no matter what. But we're just gonna wrap it up going to the next game. Uh, so game three, the all-important game three, and wait till you guys see what's in my opponent's hand here. So I started with normal summon Neospace Connector. Connector is going to uh, summon out from the deck Dolphin. I don't know if you guys can see what's in his hand, but he's reading Connector, and he's going to go ahead and summon out Dolphin. I'm going to use Dolphin's effect here and wait till you guys check this out. Like, this this is crazy. You guys are just going to, like, what are the odds, right? So he's reading Dolphin. Uh, he's sitting here thinking. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and pitch Deer Doll and check it out. Is this two ash, two draw, and a seed? So no matter what I hit, I have to go after seed. There is no way I hit the hand traps because he has two of each, right? So now I got to do my best playing through an ash and a draw. And this is complicated. I, looking back, I probably could have done it differently, but caught in the moment, I just kind of got to sit and think because it's like really it, it's very difficult. Like the line that I got to go through is because I know I'm gonna get ashed and I know I'm gonna get drilled. So I have to figure out the the best way to do it. And I think I opened a Ricardetto, and Ricardetto actually has a really cool effect that it can banish itself from graveyard or hand, a special from the hand. And I should have utilized that. I should utilize that a little bit more moving forward. I, I just really don't know. I'm contemplating on what I should even do. Do I dare go ahead and like go like the Direndal I have in my hand, grab the Ogier, or grab the, the uh, whatchamacallit, the Oliver and continue that way and end up going like into a level eight? Is that possibly what I do? I go into the Lavavel Extra Lord to be able to burn and like banish something, but you know, if he opens like a powerful spell, I need to do that. So I go ahead and use Durandal, Durandal effect to attempt to add. So he can Ash here, but we're gonna try and bait the Ash. He already has that, he's gonna draw. We're gonna get the Oliver, and I'm not even gonna let him get the chance to use the Ash in hand. So we're gonna go ahead and special summon out the Roland, or excuse me, special summon out the Oliver by discarding the Ricardetto. We're gonna go ahead and Synchro into, I believe we go for Lancelin. I think Lancelin's, the, Lancelin's what we go for, because there's no point in going for Angelica, and I go for Lancelin, I think Lancelin's what I go for. I'm, I'm contemplating. Lancelin can equip out Joyous from the deck, which then Joyous can, or I think I go for, I can't remember what I go for. If I didn't use Durandal, I could have technically gone for Durandal, and Durandal would have allowed me to, um, Durandal would have allowed me Oh, no, I know what I do. So I go ahead and clip Joyce, use Joyce effect, destroy yourself to add back the, yeah, Oliver. Banish Ricardetto, special out the Oliver. And then we can synchro here into Charles. Yep, there we go. I'm, you're do I'm doing good. I'm do I got it, I got it. Go into Charles, and then I got to use Oliver's effect to equip the Charles, link off Charles into Charlemagne. Charlemagne re-equip Charles. And I know on a spell and trap negate, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, hindsight, looking back, maybe I should have gone for his old and maybe attempt to grab the add off of his old. But I'm gonna go ahead and equip the Durandal and go ahead and equip another Oliver from deck so he can't be targeted. Because I know he doesn't play a lot of destruction here. Uh, however, like knowing his hand, like he's on one card, so if he draws a spell, but he does draw a spell, so it's it's game over, man. It is game over. Well, anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Charles from Team COG, and we're gonna sign out.